I want to talk about compliance for a second, right? And, and the reason why is because I know virtual I learners. Is that compliance. I, always get some. <laughs> I know, I know that you guys operate a lot in the financial space, healthcare, et cetera. And so, um, you know, and there's a lot of industry specific compliance protocols that are out there, um, you know, government specified. So, uh, I just kind of want to know, you're talking about attacks on people and personal vulnerability, credential hygiene, like that kind of stuff. Um, does compliance play a role here? And is this something that, that is relevant to like this conversation? Should people be thinking about it or is that maybe a different conversation? It's definitely something that IT staff in, in IT security being in that definitely need to be aware of. I guess my stance on compliance is that you know, go government directed compliance is while great and while getting someone to sort of get in the mindset and push them forward towards security, they aren't able to keep up with the sort of rapidly evolving threats that we're actually seeing out there in the wild. Businesses are getting themselves into this bit of conundrum right now because security has been largely pushed due to compliance. People are losing sight of the actual reason we are making these compliances occur. Um, uh, let me expand on that. So just because, and I know this kind of sounds a little, little silly on its face, but it's true. Just because you're compliant doesn't necessarily mean that your organization is actually secure. I know that. that you want to walk me through that? <laughs> you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of compliance officers shaking their head right now, but um, I will give you a real world example. So we were doing an audit of an individual. They, uh, they had NIST compliance requirements. And one of those in the you know, list of hundreds of requirements is a tiny little section with a little sentence and it says network time protocol. And <laughs> all that is is making sure that all your systems are synced up to one centralized time. Great, that, that's a great feature for security. However, what we found from actually looking through their systems was that their implementation of the network time protocol or NTP, what they did was they opened up NTP for every server and every system on their network to essentially they opened up a port, poked a little hole, and they sent all these systems talking to external public addresses. That's horrible security. <laughs> you just, again, pinprick the little hole in all your network going to talk to public addresses. What we did was essentially we, we went to them and said, look, great, you are compliant. Now let's make you securely compliant. Let's make sure, you know, your NTP and structure, let's take all those holes. And let's just point them towards one system that we heavily monitor and that can go out and talk. And that way we're able to, again, sort of get that centralized security and management that, um, that really that compliance is striving for it, it's hard. So is there like, uh, I don't know, is there, is there like an easy fix for that? Uh, is it like a, a, a big audit or, or how do you as, as a professional and how do you as a business, I think is more importantly, how do you make sure you're not leaving yourself open to those types of well-intended missteps? Right. Well, as I said, I mean, a lot of the, the technology is already, we, we've caught up in areas. We're able to see this stuff and protect ourselves against it. The problem we're running into is sort of a mindset. It's an industrial problem, if you will, in that we are lacking the sort of sharing of intelligence that is required for a global infrastructure. And again, to kind of to beat on the Wild West sort of thought, Right now, we're in that, uh, you know, each business, each town has its sheriff, has its, it has its IT security guy or small group. That didn't work back then, and it's not going to work now. We need to mature ourselves like they did back then from an industrial standpoint. We need to start reaching out to other people, even in our own business spheres, who may be competition and go, look, <laughs> I know we're fighting for each other for every dollar, but what if both of our companies go down? That doesn't help anyone. So, you know, let's, let's share information, what we're seeing in the wild, how we're getting attacked. And I think that's really sort of the key to, to fixing this overall problem. It's a mindset. So can you highlight any vendors that you are seeing, um, you know, that are ahead of the game here on, on, on defending? 
Yeah, well, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but Juniper is a good one. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, they we are constantly, they're, they're giving us security feeds. They're letting us know a sort of different network attacks are going out there. That way, again, even though they're a networking hardware company, we're able to take this information they're seeing from their stuff and put it in our centralized security, our SIM and everything, and be able to now hey, what about these brand new network attacks? Does that make any new systems vulnerable? And that's, you know, <laughs> that might be a good example of uh, sort of how we're, we're sharing and attempting to expand our knowledge and how we're discussing these things.